Hi, guys. Welcome back to August Love Story, the channel. I'm Artika. I'm Tommy. And today we are reviewing Ready to Love Season 4, Episode 8. And it is titled The X Factor. Before we get started with today's video, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Turn on the notification bell and share this to somebody that you know that watches Ready to Love. And you ready to get this thing started? Let's do it. All right. So we start out with the ladies lounge being at nephew Tommy's house this week. Um, <laughs> I wonder why they like started at a restaurant and then were like, hey, come to my house. I'm going to cook know. for y'all. Tell me you didn't cook. <laughs> he must, no, he definitely didn't cook that food. Um, so this week he is tasking the ladies with introducing the men to their exes. I'm going to be completely honest. I would have failed that task. Yeah. I'd have, that would have been a hard <laughs> task as well, man. I, I didn't really understand, like, how is that helpful for somebody else? Like, y'all broke up for a reason. It's like... And not even just that. Like, okay, I'm going to use the example of Alexis, right? Yeah. Um, Alexis' last relationship was her ex-husband. Yeah. She introduced the guy before her ex-husband. That dude don't know her now. Right. Because she was married to her ex-husband. Well, I think they were like, friends, though. So. Even still with being friends, there's not much that he can say about somebody trying to pursue you. That's it. Because yeah. you are a different person with every person that you date, or you should be. Yeah. And I'm not saying, like, at your core you change, but, like, your ex-girlfriend before me can't tell you anything, can't tell me anything about the person that you are in a relationship. Right. Not even five girlfriends ago can tell me anything about who you are in a relationship because you are a different person. The circumstances are different because your last girlfriend before me was like from college. Yeah. So like broke, <laughs> broke Tommy <laughs> is not different. Is I mean, it's a lot different from I've finished college. I have a master's degree and I'm working in my career time. Yeah. Like the things that she might be like, he cheap. Nah, not really. <laughs> His spinning is a little different now. Yeah. So it's just like, I think that that's just weird to say yeah. I'm a roommate. And I wouldn't have anybody to bring. I'd be like, Tommy, I ain't got one. You can work <laughs> like, I can't even call my third grade boyfriend because I didn't have one. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I got nothing for you. But uh, so we'll start out with Vernicia. She met up with her ex or she had her ex David meet up with Joel. And um, we later found out that they had some similarities. Yep. Like she was like, it was a whole lot of baby throwing going on because <laughs> they both from New Orleans. Yeah. Or Louisiana. Both of them are from Louisiana. Yeah. I don't think she said New Orleans specifically. Yeah. But yeah definitely. They were both from Louisiana. Um, David asked Joel was he the jealous type because he said that I believe he said that Renisha commanded attention yeah. when they went out that might not have been the verbiage that he used but I think that's the point yeah. he was trying to yeah. make and um, Joel asked David was Renisha clingy and he said no um, she did tell Joel that she felt like he needed to communicate better Um and it's funny because I saw myself in Vernicia in that moment. Like, since you're going to start with me on the clingy stuff, let me go on air you out <laughs> real quick. I was like, how didn't he know that that was like, because it was something like it was a miscommunication. They were supposed <laughs> to go eat or something like that. And mm -hmm. uh, plans changed. It was his response <laughs> to that. And it was like at that point they they had been like like I don't want to say they've been arguing, but it, you can t you can tell it caused the rift. There was a disconnect. There was a disconnect <laughs> between them, and uh, so Joelle was like, "Yeah, the plans had changed," mm -hmm. and she was like, "You could have said something." And for me, that, you could have said that, <laughs> right? And for me, it was like he didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> like how is she supposed to read his mind to say that you know and I, I felt her when she was like I was hungry and angry I was like you just, come on man <laughs> I too have had a disconnect with a uh, hangry person the one that is sitting over here beside me 
me and you have had some issues because you've been hungry and I didn't respond the way that you thought I was going <laughs> to respond about the meal. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, like I've seen it, but I've also been on the other side where yeah. I've been the hungry and angry person because there's been a, a miscommunication. Yeah. So it's just like, say something. That's it. That's like, just I'll tell choose. her that the plans have changed. And I feel like uh, when David, the ex-boyfriend, <laughs> had said, um, what did she say? That she's not clinging. Mm -hmm. Joel kind of like sigh of relief mm -hmm. because he was like, Todd, that would have been a, a, a no go for me if she's like real clingy. So um, I don't know. I still, I still feel good about them, man. Do you? Yeah. I don't know. We gonna see. Um, I'm hopeful. Yeah. Let's just wait a little bit. Yeah, I'm hopeful too. <laughs> Um, so next, we saw Alexis with her ex-boyfriend, Joseph, and he met up with Ron. <clears throat> so Ron started off by rubbing the ex-boyfriend and Alexis the wrong way, right. saying, what did he use uh, that he was dripping in religion? In religion? And I'm like, did I miss something that he said? I mean, I know we missed yeah, something, yeah. but what did I miss? Right. To lead us there. <laughs> Ron, like from the jump, he was shooting himself in the foot. Um, I think Ron, Ron's negative look <laughs> on religion mm -hmm. is has caused himself to like basically be up <laughs> up for elimination or whatnot. I, I feel like he wears it as a like when he said, um, what did he say? You can pray, pray, <laughs> but I'm not gonna pray. I'm gonna just go get it. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I was just like, man, I, I'm at a loss <laughs> for words. Here, you, here's this Christian woman, mm -hmm. and you know she's a she's into her religion and she's mm -hmm. very Christian. Former pastor's former wife. pastor's wife. Why would you come into the conversation to talk to her ex boyfriend who also is a is a religious person? Yeah, he's uh. <laughs> I want to say he has a position in the church. It's possible. I don't know for sure. But why would you come in? Mm -hmm. And it's a woman that you're trying to pursue, mm -hmm. possibly. Why would you come in and, and say that? Mm -hmm. You know, you basically mm -hmm. are saying, like, whatever it is with your religion, like, I know a lot of people that would be like, okay, <clears throat> you know, it's I grew up where my grandma would go to church, but my granddad wouldn't. Right, but then turned to find out he was part of a a, <laughs> a gospel, a gospel singing, singing group. group. Two <laughs> things are, are weird to me. It, <laughs> first off, he was a part of a, a a singing group, a gospel singing group, but a singing group in general. Right, man rarely talks or rarely talked, and I didn't know the brother could sing. I wish we could have experienced that side of your grandfather. I, right. That'll be, I got to hear something. Like somebody <laughs> got to tape a DVD something. Be like, come on, Blue. I know they called it. I know he had a deep one. <laughs> he, was, he had to be Blue off the tip. Anyway, um, I didn't understand why Ron uh, came into that conversation saying those, those things in pursuant of Alexis mm -hmm. and expecting a good outcome you know when people go into the um because he said something about like pastors collecting checks i'd be like who hurt you right like i feel <laughs> like that's that's none of my business but like when people go into it that deeply i always uh use the argument that you don't work for free mm -hmm. we don't like to see the guest pastor get up and speak um, like you know in place of the pastor because he's not here this Sunday yeah. we want this man to work every Sunday put together a sermon come if your grandmama's sick in the hospital perform a, um, a funeral service if she dies and then we don't think he deserves any money for that Right. I'm not saying that you gotta pad the man's pockets but like a lot of pastors in my experience because I have known quite a few pastors personally still work yeah so like his job can't provide for him <laughs> like people be like he driving a fancy car 
because he go to work. <laughs> right. He just happens to have two jobs. Mm-hmm. The one that he worked nine to five, and then he come in here with y'all on Sunday morning. It's like, let that man live. Yeah. I, I just feel like when people start looking at the <laughs> pastors, pastors like pockets, mm-hmm. it's like, man, what are you going to that church for? Find a new one. Go to a new church. And like, it's, it's about the message that's <laughs> given. You know, it's a, <laughs> religion is all about the interpretation. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's how you interpret it. So, um, but yeah, I thought that was dumb on Ron's part to come in, at, <laughs> in there like guns blazing. Of I ain't into religion, mm-hmm. you know. So it's more. It was. I felt like it was more so. Of, uh, should have been more of a conversation about Alexis as a person and him as a person. Him just all the extra stuff like. Dwelling on religion, uh, dude dripping, dripping religion, and and you you praying, and I'm going to get it, and all that stuff, man. Like he could have left that part out. He absolutely could have. Um, you got anything else for them? No. All right. Next up, we see Vernicia get the ladies together to visit her friend's nail bar. So they all got looks like manny's and pities, maybe. Yeah. Um, and they had a bartender there. I saw the product the product placement for the wine coolers. What was it? I think it was Seagram's. Oh yeah. Yeah. So they had like they still were mixing them with liquor. Yeah. But they um Seagram's was there. The Seagram's wine coolers were the star of that gotcha. little show. Um, so the bartender made them drinks about the men that they're in their lives. Um, Joel was a bourbon splash, Ron was a strawberry margarita, and I missed what um <laughs> David's drink was. I wonder what kind of drink would I be? Whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Just that's it. Sweet and lime juice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What they call it. That's just that's just that's it. I need anyway. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. I shouldn't have said what that's you a, like to that's drink. So, that's so basic. <laughs> but that's what you like to you drink. You calling me basic? You are. It's okay. <laughs> um <laughs> So, Vernicia told uh, Kyra during this time that she doesn't think that she's ready to let go of uh, AJ. And I didn't really, like, I got why she said that because we all look at the conversations that they have in the ladies' lounge. Granted, they're just snippets, but it's just like, okay, you keep going back to this guy that you said was the worst day of your life. And give. He ended up redeeming himself, but on Ong's dime. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what it is about <laughs> AJ that people do do not like, but I think AJ... Oh, it's nothing that I don't like. I think that he's charming. He seems very charismatic. I just don't think that he's serious. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. I, I just... <laughs> I don't see it. I, I Like, I get what she was saying when she was like, she still wants to see what what happens with AJ but um her saying that she likes Jason Mm -hmm. I was like it's it's almost surprising how Jason is up there with with Kyra and Liz the way that Jason was smitten by the women in the first like couple of episodes I was like Jason going home (laughs) early (laughs) right early like the fact that he's a contender and I don't want to say he's a contender because I think that in normal circumstances, Liz wouldn't be giving him the time of day. And I don't think Kyra would really be giving him the time of day. It's possible. Um, I could be wrong, but just based on normal circumstances, I wouldn't see either of the two of them giving right, him the time right, of right. day. And I mean, that's what this is for. Yeah. To date people that you wouldn't traditionally date. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but like, I just, I'm like shocked. Episode eight. Right. And like he probably gonna make it to He probably gonna be What yeah. is it, 13 episodes? He probably gonna make it to episode 13? He definitely has the best <laughs> shot of making it to the end. Right. Right, currently. Um, but no, I I I just I'm just so I'm really <laughs> shocked, like you said, I'm really shocked at at how Jason is up there. Mm-hmm. Um and then I also laughed at the point where Liz was like, I wanna try the Jason too. Mm-hmm. You know, with the drink. <laughs> oh, this tastes good. Yeah, <laughs> the drink, and uh, you know, she had picked David. You know, for her drink at first. Um, who did Alexis get? They Ron. all think they. She got Ron. Yeah, she, she got Ron, but I don't remember what. Oh, his drink was the strawberry margarita. Yeah, so, yeah, we did get his drink. Yeah, so. 
So next, we go back to the dates. Let's go back. Liz introduced David to her ex, Clarence. Well, I'm going to start <laughs> off before we get into their date. Everybody has a person like Clarence in their lives yeah. that they attempted to date. That will probably be the person that I would have to bring on. <laughs> yeah. Somebody that they attempted to date and it just was awkward. And you're like, no, we're much better as friends. Like it never went beyond the kids. I have, I have. <laughs> like I'm saying, every, I think everybody has yeah. that person. Like everybody has a clearance that's like, no, nah, this is my homie. Yeah. Like it's yeah. nothing between us, but like he gonna be here. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like everybody has that person. And the person that you're with usually thinks nothing of it absolutely like nothing. it's one of those forefront we went on one day it didn't work out and we just became friends. like we became this is my bestie for the right. rest <laughs> so um liz told clarence before david got there about david um throwing salt on her essentially yeah because it was the fact that he brought up her kissing jason mm -hmm. in front of his friends um and she would like told him that in the private. Um, he told she told him that over the phone after it happened. Yeah. And then he goes and brings it up to the friends. Like she said that he started off by asking her um, where was she at today, knowing that she had been with on yeah. that date with Jason and he and Jason Kyra and Jason's friends. So it was like he just started off on the wrong foot. Like don't be trying to make people feel a way about me. Yeah. <clears throat> knowing that this is a TV show and this is how production works. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> David asked Clarence about their level of intimacy. And of course, that immediately rubbed Liz the wrong way. And, you know, Clarence was straightforward. Like, hey, you know, both of them were like, we kissed. It didn't work out. Yeah. We friends. Like nothing I, more. I just feel like if you know this is her ex, right? You have to assume that they did everything. That Ooh. would be the assumption. That would be as the, a forty plus right, year old. That person. would be the assumption. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a fair assumption. So you don't have to ask the question. Like I didn't understand the, the David's <laughs> line of questioning, and it's it's like it. Don't say how you feel. Like the conversation <laughs> pissed me off because it was like. Bro, what are you doing? No, it was definitely like cringeworthy. And it's like, I don't automatically assume that everybody's had sex. Although I guess we should. Yeah. But I don't like immediately go there because this could have been like, Liz seems like she keeps people around that are good, genuine people. Yeah. Like just the vibe that she gives off. And if this is an ex that you're still friends with, Something has transpired that you guys are like, hey, we can be cool. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. Like, I feel like the only person whose ex might have not ended great was Kyra's. Yeah. Like, I feel like she was the only person that was like, what he found, what he about to say to you. Yeah. yeah. Everybody else was just like, hey, this is my friend. You know, we dated. It didn't work out. We're cool. Yeah. <laughs> Now, David, David <laughs> asks Clarence, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know like where the conversation shifted, mm -hmm. but it definitely was a I don't like how this is going type of uh, vibe listening to their conversation. And David asked him to bring down the strength in the room. And I was like, <laughs> what does he mean? I was truly confused. It was to because... Um Clarence asked him um, how important was communication. David gave a rattled off, you know, oh, standard yeah, textbook yeah, yeah, answer. Yeah. It's the most important thing. He wants his woman to be his safe space. And then Clarence countered that by telling him Liz felt unsafe mm -hmm. when you did this. Essentially, how do you go about making sure that this doesn't happen again? Because she shared this with me because I am a safe space for her. Like, you need to also be a safe space since that's what you're claiming yeah. that you are. And that's... That's what you're asking her to, to give you. Right. 
or B to you. And that's where the BS started. <laughs> I like I don't know what uh David had said to because I had toned out like at that point what he said to uh Liz because it was like a bunch of let me get my story straight to me. He um Liz's words, and this is exactly what happened, was he started showering her with compliments. Yeah. And it was just one of those things where it's like, but bro, you didn't answer the question. At all. You <laughs> just started talking. Yeah. And we'll see that happen again later on. In and the episode. <laughs> he just started talking, trying to find the answer. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, and then he <laughs> asked to bring the strength. That as you can see, that really bothered me because I really didn't know. <laughs> he said, "Pipe down." <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was. He said, "Pipe down." That's no, I'm saying like that's, that's what it that, is. That's exactly what he meant by it. like. I want you to pipe down. Yeah, like um, uh, but David left. Mm-hmm. He, I think he felt he left as if he felt intimidated by Clarence. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I didn't feel that Clarence had a bone in his body that was trying to intimidate David. I felt like the only thing that he was looking for was to make sure that this was the right person for right. Liz. And I think Clarence made the decision that <laughs> I don't know if this is the right guy. But in the beginning, Funny. right, <laughs> in the beginning, I felt like David walked in when once he found out that that's her ex um, with a I don't want to be a part of this conversation, mm-hmm. you know, um, but that's how I felt with that. <laughs> David just uh, he pretty much just closed the door with him and Liz. <laughs> Bruno said I'm going to leave the door open <laughs> He did not <laughs> <laughs> He did not <laughs> He closed that So next up was Kyra And her ex <laughs> Timothy You were really smooth with that was <laughs> um, Timothy had to meet with them Via Skype or yeah, something. Yeah, over, he was on the TV Over video chat And uh, it, was, so it was Kyra, Timothy and Jason um, Jason essentially just told Timothy, bro, I'm looking for a wife. Yeah. And um, every time a man says that, I think about the TV show Sex in the City. And um, one of the characters on, I know you never watched this show. No. One of the characters on Sex in the City said that men are like taxi cabs. And um, <laughs> they drive, when they're ready for marriage, they drive around with their light on until somebody hops in. It's kind of like girls are like buses. Every 15. <laughs> but it's just like, it's not that you're the one. You're the one that said yes. You get what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, you aren't necessarily the woman that I was vying for, but I am ready to settle down. And you two are agreeing to settle down. So, I mean, let's settle down together. And that's what I felt like Jason was saying with I'm looking for a wife. <laughs> I can get that. Um, I don't want to say that that's what happens. I'm not saying that that's what happened, but I, that's what I, I felt. Yeah, I get what you're saying. <laughs> um, so Tim said Kyra doesn't let things go. I was like, that's typical ex-boyfriend speak. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Jason <laughs> asked Tim about Kyra's money management skills. And I was a little thrown off. Yeah, I was like, where did that question come from, man? <laughs> because I don't know where Kyra lived, but the place that she lived seemed nice enough. Yeah. Um, on top of that, she had enough money to pay for the date that AJ bailed out on her right. on. Right. So, I mean, I'm not saying that she got to be rolling in money because of it, but she wasn't dating for... Um, she wasn't dating him because she was looking for dinner because she couldn't afford it. Right. Nah, she uh <laughs> she just not good at budgeting, which a lot of people not good at budgeting because they don't try it. So um sorry to throw myself under the bus there. Yeah. Um I said that felt like a question that was fed to him. But at the ending of it, Kyra, uh <laughs> when Jason left, Kyra basically told Timothy where he had her messed up. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, I can respect that. Because she was like, what you not going to do is come in here and tell the next dude about whatever downfalls you feel like I had with you. Because I'm not that woman anymore. (laughs) That ain't ain't my ministry anymore. That ain't my ministry. 
You got anything else for no, uh, no. that trio? So the next trio was Amber, her ex, Tony, and Chris. Um, Tony asked Chris about having kids, and he said that he wanted a whole slew of them. And Amber said the same thing. She essentially said that she's always wanted to be a mom, even more so than she wanted to be a wife. She's never thought that she would not have kids. And I was like, I hear a lot of people that say things like that, and um, you need somebody to dump them kids. <laughs> You're a trip, man. <laughs> um, no, just kidding, but not. Um, so Amber said kids was fine. Tony looked surprised for some reason. So I'm like, I don't know how that factored in that he was surprised that Amber wanted kids, but like they were exes. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> Chris, <coughs> excuse me. Chris then said he felt something weird in the connection in their relationship and like something happened. So then we find out that, uh, I don't know if Tony said that he was bisexual or that he was gay. I heard him say he likes men, yeah. but I don't, I, I heard and also, but that doesn't mean that it yeah. was there. Um, so Amber was the person that he was dating when he came out and she was just like, that relationship took me through a lot. And I could definitely see that. Mm -hmm. Like if you date someone and then all of a sudden it's like, I don't like men's no more or I don't like women's no more. That would be what he said. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, man. I think it would, you would feel a way just off of the strength of the relationship because the person wasn't being upfront with you yeah. when you started dating. Yeah. But I guess some people do have to find themselves and figure out, you know, their path with... I think I was gonna say I think it it was kind of <laughs> the the friendship mm -hmm. blossom because you can tell that they're they're friends they're they're friends with each other but I think it's cool that their friendship blossomed from that because it's like some people would wouldn't be able to handle information like that mm -hmm. you know um, and I think I think it's pretty cool that how Chris is <laughs> like I don't know Chris they probably told Chris that. Or something, but it, like, I think it's cool that Chris found interest in the response and, mm -hmm. and the dynamic between those two after he found out. Mm -hmm. You know, I was completely thrown off when he said it. I was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Um, you got anything else for them? No. All right. So no. next up, AJ and Jason met up with Liz and Alexis. Um. <laughs> oh, we found out AJ's drink was called the Smooth Persuasion because they talked about it. Yeah. Um. At that meetup. Yeah. And Alexis basically told AJ that she hopes that he doesn't break her heart. Like he seems like he could be the kind of guy that she could be with and fall in love with, but she would be nervous that he would break her heart. And essentially, he um interrupted all her speaking with a kiss <laughs> he said he essentially he was like shut up and kiss me AJ found his way to stay in the game yeah that's all I mean like essentially that's all he needed to do and, okay so that's the part about this show that bothers me because people do whatever they can do to make it to the ending but the nobody's... goal should be to find the best connection to be in a relationship not to get the most of the 13 weeks of TV time so, <clears throat> yeah, that just yeah that always bothers um, me. <laughs> yeah, that part I did, that was the most the biggest part of that whole conversation. Yeah, because Jason a, also gave Liz, Liz a kiss, gave her a kiss on her cheek, and I, yeah. I just felt like they were just going back and forth. Look what I can do! Look what I can do! I can kiss her. Can you kiss her? <laughs> <laughs> the funny part was, I was like, "Good for you, Alexis," because she was the only one who hadn't been kissed. Was she? That's what she said at the beginning. Oh, yeah. So the ladies get back together with nephew Tommy at his house. And Alexis says that she felt like Ron made her out to be a judgy Christian. And uh, nephew Tommy's wife, I cannot remember her name, Mrs. Miles. That's what I'm going to call her. Um, said that men need to leave the house. And I thought about Bishop. <laughs> men leave your household. Um, so essentially 
what they the conversation that they had about um religion and their faith it was more so about faith than um religion was that nephew tommy said when they decided to break ground on the land that they built their house on they had all of their friends come over and pray over the land with them and he was like it's always been an important part of our relationship to be focused on our <clears throat> on our faith and they were like basically like you need to decide if that's something that you can live with and I could not imagine Alexis being the person that she is being grounded how she is in faith because people always say you know Alexis is always talking about sex I'm like you can want to have sex and be a Christian too like those two things can happen at the same time Mm -hmm. But um, going through and thinking about like thinking about the person that she is and the way that she talks about her relationship with Christ and her involvement in the church, I would be hard pressed to believe that she would be a woman going to church every Sunday yeah. and her husband never shows up mm-hmm. like ever. I, I wouldn't. <laughs> For me, it, it was more so of. Like him, like they was looking at like what I got from it was they was looking at it from a leadership standpoint. How is it that your your belief in God, right, mm-hmm. is is strong, but the person that you're with with <laughs> who's leading your household is not. Mm-hmm. No, that's what I mean. Like. I'm not saying that he would have to come and join church and do all of these things in church and be super involved, but I would not expect her to not wake him up every Sunday morning and ask him, even if he ain't been the last 53 Sundays, you going today? (laughs) Right. I just just don't like... It was was a hard conversation to watch with Ron. Mm-hmm. And then when she was talking about it, it's just like, man, I know that's a decision for you because you're going to put your eggs in this basket. <laughs> and I mean, the thing with that is, is that Ron says you're going to pray about it and I'm going to go get it. But it's like faith without works is dead. It's dead so, so she's praying about it, but she's going to get it, too, because yeah. she doesn't strike me as a person that just sits back and lets life pass her by. Like right. she has a sense of aggressiveness in mm-hmm. her for things that she wants. So why would that be your word choice exactly. for her? Exactly. Don't be upset because she's praying about it. Like you need to wonder why you not. Right. It's like, nah, that it rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's like, Ron, you can go home too. <laughs> um, Liz said in this that she should have uh not said that David had her heart, but that he had her deep interest because at this point. Liz is like David is showing me a different side of him. Right, right. And then he really showed her a different <laughs> side of him. So we get to um oh before we get to the bottom two. So they said and every time he asked him if they had to leave tonight, who would they leave with? Kyra said Jason. Liz said Jason. Renisha said Joel. Amber said Chris. And Alexis said AJ. Mm-hmm. So that left Ron and David with zero votes. <clears throat> So Alexis met up with Ron, Liz met up with David, and none of these conversations went anywhere by the end of the episode. They did not. I The only thing I wrote about Liz and David was David did not let Liz speak. And for Alexis, I said, Alexis came in with her guns blazing. She let him know where he had her messed up at. And he said that he feels like Alexis picked him because she needed validation. And she told him that he felt very condescending. I was like, to tell somebody that they picked you because they needed validation? Yeah. He was he was talking out the side of his head, man. No, he knew where this was going. Yeah, he definitely knew. And where. he was trying to be Naya and go out with a bang. Right. <laughs> he was going out with a I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> I, I just find it to be sad and interesting. I, I found it interesting that they allowed the persons of interest to mm-hmm. talk to the people that we suspect to go home. I think that it's because people have gotten hip to pers- the person that you didn't connect Random with. Random connections. And, <laughs> yeah. You know. Because like when Liz was in the bottom two 
it was Ron yeah. that she like she had not that we have seen gone on any dates with Ron. So for her, she was like, I was surprised when I got that message. Mm-hmm. I'm like, girl, me too. <laughs> <laughs> me too. But we know why we here. Yeah. Um, and then Liz went with uh, David. We didn't start with it. I guess nobody got eliminated. Yeah, nobody got eliminated. That's why I didn't but, start uh, there. The funny thing about theirs was David was adamant about saying whatever it is he wanted to say. David was trying to, um, you heard the song, clean up woman? Yeah. He was trying to be the clean up man. <laughs> he was trying to clean up everything that went wrong in the conversation with Clarence mm-hmm. and in the conversation with his friend. David has been able to apologize his way out of things. Mm-hmm. So, for someone to be able to apologize their way out of things, I'm not going to let you talk. I'm going to apologize first because then you don't have anything mean to say to me. And maybe you'll have a change of heart about eliminating me. But it's like, nobody has to have the change of heart about eliminating you. It's going to happen. We're yeah, just not going to call you for dates. <laughs> right. Regardless of, you know, you're you not apologizing. Gonna get, you're not going to get the call sheet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting sent home today. <laughs> Um, but I just found that interesting that he would be so adamant. Like it was like, bro, just let her talk. Right. Like she obviously is going to let you say something mm-hmm. before she tells you to that you, you know, not going not ready to love. But just <laughs> let her talk, man. Like I, don't even I, I felt say like he, that was so childish. I don't even want to say he's not ready to look. He's not ready for a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, he, he got a lot of stuff that he needs to. And it came out of nowhere. For me, it was like you started, you saw glimpses of it when he talked with Stacy. Mm-hmm. Then you start. But we defended what he tried right, to right, say. We did. Or what we felt like he should have been he, right, trying we, to say. Like how it comes out, you mm-hmm. know. We because like, like we both are guilty of that. Like we say things. I mean, not just us, but like in general, yeah. people are guilty of saying things and they're not coming out the way that you want them right, to come exactly. out. Exactly. But um I don't know. I'm I'm interested <laughs> to see the ending of the conversations uh coming up. So since we didn't get an elimination, do you think it's just David that's nah, going home? Because we know David's going home. Yeah, David's <laughs> going home. No, nah, I think Ron's going home, too. Okay. So, with the people that are left, or the ladies that are left, we'll have Kyra, Liz, Renisha, Amber, and Alexis, right? Mm-hmm. That's five ladies, and we had five guys, so there'll only be Jason. No, there'll be... One, two, three, four. There'll be four guys left. Jason, Joel, Chris, and AJ. Who do you think is going to pair off? Of course, we're looking at Amber and Chris. Amber and Chris, <laughs> Joel and Vernicia. Vernicia. Uh-huh. Uh, that's the tough one right here. So the ladies that you have is Kyra, Liz, and Alexis. Well, we know Jason is going to pair with Kyra and Liz mm-hmm. and then AJ is going to pair with Alexis and Kyra mm-hmm. so I think it'll be Kyra and Jason I think so Kyra Jason Vernisha Joel Amber Chris I think <laughs> I think so because Alexis is going to go get sent home why because, do you think Alexis is because I think home? I think uh Cause she still has AJ. She still has AJ, but I think AJ is gonna choose Kyra. Okay. I don't know, man. I'm just making up something. Man. I don't. I'm, I'm. I'm honestly thinking Liz is gonna go home <laughs> next. Okay. And if Liz goes home, then that leaves Jason for Kyra. If the girls go, if the girls <laughs> is going home this next time. They probably won't go home this episode. Yeah, because it's at a resort. I mean, that doesn't mean anything. I don't know. but Because they know how to eliminate people from a resort from last season. Oh, yeah, they do. (laughs) Um, Liz, I think Liz and Alexis, if it's for the girls, one of them are going to go home. Okay. And I think it's more so Liz than Alexis because Alexis has 
one guy. If Ron goes home, she only has AJ. Yeah. <laughs> and then Liz only has Jason because AJ said no because yeah. of the sex. Um, Joel and Liz haven't had any type of interaction, right. but that didn't stop him from saying Kyra last yeah, week. Yeah, I don't know what he was doing. And then the people that I don't see is Amber and Chris. Like, I yeah. can't see any reason that either one of them would choose someone other than them. Like, Chris is going on all the dates and doing all yeah, the right things but he's this like, time around. It's Amber. It's, it's Amber for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Amber for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard, man. It's interesting. That, like, this is the part that I really enjoy because it's like you like you can't call it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's it's interesting now to see what they're doing and how they're going to, you know. I would be terrible at a TV show like this. I would be like Renisha. I would have got That's put- my man. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking to my man? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know how I would do in this. I do terrible. Yeah, I probably would do awful. I probably that's, got put off. That's like, why the, the Lord did not put time. me in any type of reality date. <laughs> like he ain't put me in the spectrum of even like being out there to do this. Right, right, right. That's funny, man. Because he yeah. knew better. <laughs> y'all let us know what y'all think, man. Absolutely. Who's going home next? Let us know who you guys think is going home. Do you think it is both Ron and David? Because we all are completely in cahoots that David is going yeah. home. Yeah. Ron is the wild card. And who do you think is the next lady to go home? Uh, what other question did I have? I feel like I had another one. I don't know. I don't. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Turn on the notification bell. Comment down below uh, with what you guys thought of this week's episode, as well as share this video to a friend. Just take the whole playlist and just send it over to somebody because, you know, everybody's watching the show. Even my mama. Hey, mom. <laughs> <laughs> like the video. Oh, yeah. Like the video. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, hopefully this week we get to do a live. Last week we missed a live because I had family come in town that I didn't expect to be here that day. So we kind of missed that. But we'll come back around to doing the lives. Yep. Podcast is also going to be out soon as yep. well. All right, guys. Bye. Peace. <laughs>